No matter what kind of projects you have around the shop, if you're looking for some tips and help, it's time for Sam's Garage, presented by Lund International, with Sam Mamolo and Sam Madavi. First project we got is this 1968 Malibu. You know, you guys are gonna restore a car, fix it up, you're gonna spend money on a drive line, you're gonna paint it, you're gonna do an interior. Before you get that far, do like Sam's done to his customer here. Fix the wiring harness. It's 50 years old. It wasn't great when it was put in at the factory. And, you know, we found all kinds of things like these splices. It didn't even have so many twisted wires together. This is extreme. Didn't have any uh, uh, tape on it. The bulb sockets are no good. You don't want to ride down a road and have 50% of the stuff you put in the car work when it wants to. How's that bulkhead connector? The bulkhead connector looks pretty bad. Like you said, it's 50 years old. It's got a lot of green oxidation on it. And you know, your voltage is only as good as your ground is. So it's very important that right. all this be working correctly. And those bulkhead connections have always been a source of problems. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a brand new painless performance wire harness in this car. And our buddy Dennis Overholz is here. He's gonna show us what we got that's very specific to this car. I brought you a brand new, just released 1968 Complete plug and play Chevelle harness. Awesome. Look at this, it's got sockets and connectors, it's got the whole thing. Yeah, the whole works, whole works. Even got the courtesy lights, the whole nine hours is in there. And you get a great set of instructions, they got a great book, and not only is it thick, it's got its step by step color, it's got the diagram, it's got all the tips in it. But here's the original um, bulkhead connector, and if you look close down here, you can see it's got corrosion. These things were a real source of corrosion. I've seen them leave people on the side of the road, they lose ignition or they lose lights. So don't mess with that. And you got a brand new connector on this. Now notice it's bigger. It's bigger because uh, it's, a, it's a little bit later model uh, bulkhead connector, all the factory style pins, but there's more of them. That way the customer then can add all the accessories they want to add and uh, not have to modify the harness. Okay, so now we've got the harness laid out. I've got the dash harness here. I've given the engine harness to Dennis. I've got a tail harness right here. And the kit comes with a pretty comprehensive instruction sheet, but we all know that projects take a long time and none of us finish it when we start it. So it's a good idea to take a bunch of pictures of your project so that maybe three or four weeks down the road you come back, you know where everything is gonna go. Also, it's a perfect time that while you have the car apart, to check all your switches, like the headlight switch, the ignition switch has been turned 10,000 times. Also, the kit's going to come with all new sockets, so it's a perfect time to put all new bulbs in as well. It comes with new flashers, fuses, zip ties, comes with both insulated and non-insulated crimps so that you can use them per the instructions tell you to. Now Dennis, in my shop I'm always fixing ground issues, okay, that's the biggest problem when it comes to building any car or diagnostics. What have you done to alleviate that problem? One of the things we did, Sam, is the, all the ground wires that are necessary for the car are now incorporated into the harness. So once you install the harness, there will be a ground tab that needs to be you know, attached to whatever. It's all there and uh, just plug it in and it's done. And you guys want to make sure that when you install your grounds to make sure you scrape off any paint at the point where you're going to screw that ground point down so you got metal contacting to. That's a real good point too, Sam. Another thing that we do is in case you know, well, I'm not sure about this wire, or whatever. We label every wire that uh, tells it where the wire goes to and the connector. And so it's, it's really easy, plug and play, ready to go. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and install this. You give that to Sam and let's see if we can get him to do some work. Okay. So what we have to do is lay this out. We'll go ahead. And by the way, we're not going to finish this today. We've got a couple other projects. We're probably going to come back to this next week. You're going to hang around for a while? Absolutely. We'll do some fishing or something sure, like we'll that. We'll do something. All right. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start passing this through to Sam. And without laying this out, we'll follow the instructions and um, it's just gonna go together real easy. We've got a lot more coming here at Sam's Garage. Stick around. Sam's Garage, presented by Lund International, is being brought to you by Low Car Performance Products. Quality, plain and simple. Stage eight the world's best locking fastener. Brothers Truck Parts, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GM truck restoration. Bushwhacker, inventor of the fender flare. Welcome to the Brothers Truck Parts Workshop. 
Well, we're here in the Brothers Truck Parts Workshop with Steve and Jim, and they're gonna help us. We've got a lot of projects. We're gonna have something new every week from Brothers Truck Parts. So what are we doing to this little so, 1500? This week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a drop spindle, disc brake upgrade with lowered coil springs. So it'll drop it about five inches, and um, we're gonna let these guys do it so we don't get our hands That's dirty. a great idea, let's go. We've got about 15 or 20 minutes into this project. I mean, we've got the caliper off. Uh, we've taken the brake lines loose. We've got the dust cap, the castle nut, rotors off, dust shields off. And basically, uh, at this point, you want to clean up some of the grime. Loosen, actually, we've already loosened the ball joints. So uh, our next step we're going to be doing is taking the spring off here. Now, once in a while, this spring, depending on the, on the spring rate, sometimes the spring will actually fall right out of there. This time, if it is stuck like that, you want to get a pry bar in there to kind of get a little more uh, leverage on it. That was simple, huh? A lot better than the sports cars we do these days. And the spring we're going to replace it with is going to be a lowered spring. Going to have a, uh, a different spring rate to it. And uh, just going to perform a lot better. And as you can see, just in the, in the height of the spring itself, much lower spring. It's going to lower the vehicle down. It also has a different spring uh, rate in it that's going to give you a better ride quality, a little more uh, high performance. And then in the spindle, you can see how much higher the actual spindle is located compared to where it connects to the truck. It's pretty much five inches of coolness. And what you got here is a progressive spring race so that if you're ever going, having a spirited ride going around corners, it's gonna get stiffer as it bounces and as it works. And that's what the progressive rate in it is, is actually there for. Okay, right. let's put them on. Let's quit messing around and get to work. So now that we got our spring in, and the, and the lower spring is a lot easier to get inside. So you wanna make sure that you've got the bottom in its pocket. If you don't, it'll snap in place and it could be bad. And there's a top that also goes inside of a pocket so that the spring stays stationary. Then you can have a buddy do the jack, work the jack while you make sure the spring is in place. And then you can go ahead and put the knuckle back in place just like that. Okay. We've got our castle nuts in place for the spindle. We've got our cotter pins all installed. I'm putting on the sway bar while Jim puts on the shock. And before we know it, Jim, we're gonna to be totally cool. Five inch drop, C-notch, flip axle in the rear. Take this sucker down to the beach and hang out, right? Absolutely. Better drive quality, better looking by far. What about the handling? Handling's gonna be great. We'd probably be better off taking this thing to the track instead of taking it to the beach. You guys can see that there was a damaged boot on there and while we had everything apart, we went ahead and replaced the boot because the joint looked fine. And this is a good time to inspect your tie rod end, your inner tie rod, and your drag leak link. Just in case you need something done, you can do it while the car is apart. All righty, there we go. We don't want to crush the bushing. Very important. Now we're ready for the dust shield. Yes, sir, and you guys, do, us your, do yourself a little favor. If you notice, we cleaned off almost 40 years, or should I say 42 years, of dirt and grime off of that backing plate. Now we can go ahead and reassemble it. Don't hog down on these. They're little bolts and you'll break them off. All right, so our next step is gonna be to pack these bearings. Brand new bearings, tapered roll bearings. You're gonna wanna be really generous. I got brand new gloves on. You don't want to use your gloves that you had the uh, dirt and grime from 40 years of all that. All right, now once you put the rotor on, you're gonna wanna put a nice big chunk of grease inside on the spindle here, inside of the new rotor before you put this bearing in. It's just gonna slide right in just like that. Your washer. Now you put the washer on, it's got a slot in it, so you make sure you got it into that slot. You guys don't want to hog down on this spindle nut. You want to go down, preload the bearings, make sure you're nice and tight with your hand. Get it to your position where you can put your cotter pin through, and you should be good to go by putting your dust cap on. All right, so now we got the uh, brake caliper back on. We've replaced, uh, put new brake hoses on. And once you get done with this whole project, you wanna bleed your brake lines, make sure that uh, your brakes are working well before you get out on the road and, and try to road test this thing with no, uh, with no fluid in the lines or air gaps in your lines. So now we're just tightening the caliper back on. We should be back on the road in no time. And we'll just snug these down nice and tight. There you go. Okay. Wanna clean that rotor. And we did clean the back side of the rotor before we put it on. Not bad for 45 minutes in the garage, huh? Not bad at all.
This is the DS-18 Project Supra. All right, folks, it's time to show you the DS-18 Project Supra. You all know about the legendary Supra. Now, you've seen hot rods being built. You've seen muscle cars being built. You've even seen a couple of engine swaps performed on some imports, but you've never seen the legendary Toyota Supra being built on television from scratch. We are gonna show you what it takes to build yourself a seven to 800 horsepower at the flywheel Toyota Supra with all the goodies. We're talking brake upgrade, wheels, tires, suspension, turbo upgrade, intake manifold, fuel system, full on engine build. Not only that, but this is a six speed Toyota Supra and we're gonna show you how you can transform an American Tremec six speed transmission since the six speed factory Toyota Supra transmission is so hard to find. We're gonna turn that barnyard fine Supra into this black beauty that you may have seen in the movie Fast Furious 5. This one's got a single turbo upgrade, a fully forged motor, high performance cams, along with a full head package, full fuel system, brake upgrade, a built transmission, and a sound system. This car is in pretty rough shape. It's been sitting behind a body shop for over 10 years. The differential has been taken out. The engine and transmission is completely missing. It's an original six-speed car, and the very expensive transmission is no longer here. So we're gonna take this, and we're gonna build it into a full-on showpiece, but a fully performing car that is capable of 800 crank horsepower, and it's gonna stop on a dime. But not only that, it's gonna be reliable. The first thing we're gonna do is start with the suspension on the car along with the brake upgrade because without suspension and brakes the horsepower is pretty much useless. Then we're going to move on to the under the hood, build the motor, install the cooling system and the intercooler. Then after we're done under the hood we're going to go inside the car and do the seats, the gauges, race harness and DS18 is going to build the most awesome sound system so that every single time you guys pull up to the light you're going to be louder than everybody else and everybody else who doesn't want to stop and see what you have in your car. Now this car is going to have 800 horsepower and the last thing you want to do is have a sloppy suspension and so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a teen set of coilovers which gives us dampening adjustments, rebound adjustment and ride height adjustment. You can also adjust your spring rate with the corners if you have cornering scales and you do some road racing. All right, now we've already got the old suspension out. We're gonna go in with the new one. James from my shop is gonna go ahead and help us out. I'm gonna press down. It's in the position. I'm gonna go up, put my hardware up on top in. He's gonna hold it in place. We're gonna put our nut, our bolt in. We're gonna tighten it all the way and then we're gonna back it down a couple of turns so that we can final torque it with the suspension on the ground so we don't put that bushing in a bind and that goes for all four corners. Now it's very important to put a suspension on a car because you're gonna be putting a bunch of horsepower in because the last thing you wanna do is go around a corner and then some guy with half the horsepower pass you by. I'm still here at SEMA Tool Shop and I tell you, I need a truck to take it all home. I'm here with Doug Harris with the hem saw. This is the uh, NG120XL. This is the saw I got in my shop. It is, it is. And you've seen me use this last year on my TV show. This will be your go-to saw, it's awesome. Tell me a little bit about this thing. This is your most popular saw. This is our most popular. It has a 1.7 horsepower variable speed motor so we can go ahead and cut anything from stainless to mild steel onto it. It's Great. also able to miter up to 60 degrees so it's easy. When you put a new blade onto it, the band tension's real good. Just go ahead, it's all clutched. It automatically sets the band tension. That's great. That way you don't run with a loose blade or over tighten the blade. Now I said it miters to 60 degrees. Think about it. But I've got other band saws. When you got your material in the vise, you got eight or 10 feet out here and you got a miter device, you're moving all the material. Here, the saw miters, the head miters. Now this, there's a neat setup on the blade. The blade runs in reverse rotation. It runs in reverse. What's the advantage there? The advantage 
advantage of is that it pulls all of the forces into the pivot point, so it allows the pressure to lower the head to be a lot less. So you can cut with this all day long. At the end of the day, you're not tired at all. Well, this saw is loaded with features. I love using mine. When you get a hem saw, you get a lot of friends that want to use it now. He's got a brand new saw coming that's not here yet. Not here yet. Yeah, it should be here in just a few weeks. It's got some great options, a thicker blade, I'm with double the horsepower, about the same size, wet or dry option, wet or dry. and what's it sitting on? It's sitting on a, a base, a very sturdy base for you. You need a saw. This will be your go-to saw. Hem saw is the way to go. Doug, thanks a Always lot, buddy. A pleasure. Sam's Garage, presented by Lund International, has been brought to you by DS18. We like it loud. Appalachian Tourism, Virginia is for lovers. Easy Run Engine Stand, American Engineering, American Quality, American Customer Service. Rampage Products, built for the trail, ready for the road. I'm here with Brandon Lesh from 3M. 3M has got a great new piece of equipment for you guys with collision centers and body shop, increased productivity and save money. What do they call this thing? This is called the Total Automotive Sanding System. What this is designed to do is reduce the amount of dust in your shop, allow you to organize your materials efficiently, right. and improve your overall process. And it's portable? It's portable, so I can take it anywhere in the shop that I'm going to do some sanding. That's a vacuum down there, huh? Vacuum at the bottom and we build up from there. The unique feature with this is the integrated air system, so I've got the air to drive my tool and uh -huh. the vacuum to extract that dust all within one easy connection. Cool. Okay. All right, how about give me a demo? Throw we'll a give you a demo. Remember, you always got to be safe. Eye protection, a mask, you don't inhale dust, gloves. This is pretty nice. It's ergonomically got a good feel. Too. Very comfortable tool. So we're going to sand over here in this hood. I can remove the paint very efficiently with my Cubitron 2 abrasive. Right. No, all that dust is being extracted into the system. Look it's that. not in my shop and in my paint booth. Excellent. So you can see it's a great way to get a good finish, less dust in your shop. When you're in a collision center, this is the kind of productivity you put money in your pocket from 3M. It's time for the Lund International Custom Shop. All right, it is raining outside, and so there's no better time than to install these AVS low-profile vent visors engineered to fit your car seamlessly and give you that OEM look. I am here with Lisa from AVS, and she's going to give us some tips and tricks on how to properly install these. Now, first, what you want to do is when you put it on the truck, you want to make it a dry fit, make sure it fits your truck and you've got the correct application. Some of these applications are going to have an indention or a provision for going on the outside of the mirror and some of the applications are going to go on the inside of the mirror. Okay Sam, before we actually do the installation, let's do a test fit to make sure it's placed in the area and you're happy with where it's sitting on the vehicle. Once you feel comfortable with where it's placed by looking to see if you don't see any more of the red tape, then we'll actually wipe down the area with the provided alcohol pads. Because this is your prep, it's what's going to clean the surface and it's going to make sure that that 3M double stick tape adheres onto the vehicle and gives you that long lasting adhesion. Looks good. All right, now prior to installation, there is some tips on the tape. Lisa, would you like to give them those tips? Yes, you wanna pull back the tape about a quarter of inch on each end. Do not remove it completely because it'll make it more difficult to actually do the install. So once you pull it back, we'll actually place it on the vehicle and you'll wanna bend it back so that it way. doesn't fall back down behind the visor. You got two tabs to where you can place it on the vehicle. Remember that you do have a section of tape back here that I've already removed. So I want to kind of line it up and when you do just the pieces, you can still move the visor around on the vehicle making sure that you are lined up. Then you can slowly peel back the tape. After you've installed them, you want to wait 24 hours before you run through a car wash and try not to do the installation in extreme temperatures. All right, there you go. Nice, clean, flush look, and it keeps the weather out. AVS, low profile vent visors, the only way to go. Hey, Lisa. I'm glad you're here. This is like a two person job, really. I want to get this just right because this guy's a fussy customer. I got it all prepped, the alcohol's dried, the tape's ready to pull back. And I read your instructions, it said, come up about a sixteenth off the leading edge. Yes. All right, tell me some tips you position these with. 
So I like to, on this particular vehicle, go to the point on the hood mm -hmm. and try to put your finger under there and just see if you can get it to match. Okay. So now I took some of the tape off, just kind of tack it in position. Yeah, so you will have removed about six inches of the tape in the middle and then you're going to press down. I want to come up here a little bit, I think. Good, good. All right, you happy with that? Yes. All right, I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, when you start pulling the tape again, you want to pull the tape and apply pressure, but not too hard because you don't want to shift your, your work over. You want to start from the middle. Okay. And we're going to do the top. I read top. that in the instructions too. <laughs> we're going to do the top for it first, and don't apply too much pressure. The tape might be difficult to pull, so you do the top. Looking pretty good here. Good. Like I said, this guy is real fussy. He'll be out there with micrometer. And then we're going to do the bottom. Okay. From the center? From oh. the center. Okay. Oh, that's great. That way you don't get a bubble if you're pulling it from the edge. All right. <clears throat> and this AVS AeroSkin 2 deflector, it's made of a material that's real tough and durable. It's UV rays won't bother it. And it's deflection and protection. It helps to deflect the air up a little bit, keeps the bugs off your windshield, keeps your leading edge from chipping. This is a great way to protect your investment. Now, you make these for a lot of vehicles, don't you? We do. We have a variety of trucks and SUVs. And when stalled properly, this, this will actually last on the vehicle for a very long time. It's car wash safe, and it matches the existing low profile vent visor that we have as well. That's great. Looks the one good. that took Sam forever to put on? Yes. <laughs> this is a great way to protect your investment. Hey, come check out what one of our customers bought us to work on. I was wondering what this was doing here. Look at this thing. Holy cow. It's every option known to me. And you got the keys. I got the keys. Hey, let's go for a ride. This is your seat. Let's go. <laughs> Not on your life. I'm out of here. <laughs> come on. Wimp.